right, welcome back. In the last video, we got our map set up. And in this video, we are going to set up the scrolling feature. So first off, I'm going to create a group and I'm going to call this initialize uh, map. And I put the map on there because you can't have the same name for a group in any project. So I'm going to slide our on start of layout event in there. And I'm going to create another group. And I'm going to call this one scrolling. All right, first I'm going to go over to our global variables tab. And I'm going to set up some variables that we are going to need. If I right click and add a global variable, I'm going to call this one start touch. OK. And I'm going to make another global variable. I'm going to call this one start scroll. I'm going to make one more. I'm going to call this one dragging. OK, and these are all three set to zero. And I'm going to add a comment. And this is going to help us see what's going on a little better. And I'm just going to say scrolling. And then I'm going to change the colors of mine. Uh, high contrast, I'm going to do black background. And a bright yellow. There we go. And I'm going to drag that above that so I know that everything below this comment is going to have to do with scrolling. Because if we were to make a group and put these into their own individual groups, they would become local variables and they wouldn't connect with uh, anything else in the project. Their scope would change to whatever's inside that group. So we can just add comments instead. In fact, I'm going to add another comment while I'm here, but I want to keep this uh, black background, yellow text. So I'm going to click on it, control click and drag out a copy and double click into it. And I'm going to call this one zoom. And I'm going to move that up above our uh, zoom variables. I'm going to make a couple more and call this one achievements time and then I'll copy paste that one call this one achievements coins and I'm going to drag our coin variables underneath coin and our time variable underneath time and we will be adding more to both of these so uh, I just want everything to be organized so I know where to find things because this is going to be a long list of variables and I want to be able to find them. Uh, I'm going to copy another one, call this one, uh, I'm just going to call this one other for right now. I'll drag this to the bottom. I'm going to take my is playing and my touch active, put them down there. So our zoom, our time, our coins, our scrolling, and then We'll figure out what to do with those later. So the ones we want to pay attention to right now are these three. Start, touch, start, scroll, and dragging. Let's go back over to our map event sheet. Let's add an event to our scrolling group. Let's go into our input folder and our touch object. And when we're scrolling, I want the screen to essentially grab onto your finger or your mouse and follow wherever that goes. So if we scroll down to touch and we say on any touch start. So that means as soon as your finger hits the screen or your mouse clicks down on while you're on the map screen, this is going to get triggered. So the first thing I want to do is tell our global variable, the dragging global variable, that it is now active. So let's add an action, go to system, and say set value and find our dragging and we want to set it to one so zero is going to be false no it's not dragging one is going to be true yes we are dragging and then we also want to initialize our touch position so let's add an action go to system set value and we want our start uh, start scroll and we want to set the value of start scroll 
to uh, an expression. And that expression is going to be the touch and then dot. And I want to find, we're, we're only using the Y coordinate, the up and down coordinate, because we can only scroll up or down. We don't have a left and right scroll on this map. So I want to find the absolute Y. And as soon as I put that dot in there, it brought these up and I want absolute Y. Let's click done. Now I want to set up another event in our scrolling group. So add an event. Let's go back to our input, get our touch. And I want to know when we are not in touch. So let's go to is in touch, select that. And with this highlighted, I'm going to hit I on the keyboard. And that's going to invert it, which means when this is not in touch, I'm going to set this dragging back to zero. So let's add an action system, set our value of dragging to zero. Also, when we're not touching, make sure that our view of the screen is set to wherever we have scrolled to. So let's add an action, go to system, set a value, and we want our start scroll. And we're going to set this to another expression, and that's going to be scroll Y. All right, so that's the easy part. When we're touching, we set this dragging to true, and we find out where our Y position is. When we're not touching, we set our dragging to false, and we set our scroll position to wherever we left off. Now, we need the screen to follow us around when we are dragging. And that's going to happen when this dragging is true. So let's go ahead and add another event. Go to System, and this time we're going to compare a variable. That variable is going to be dragging. And when it is true, which is 1, add an action, go to System, and we can just type in scroll, and it says uh, scroll to X, scroll to Y, scroll to object, or scroll to position. We are going to select scroll to position. So hit next. And our X, it uh, doesn't matter what our X is, so I'm going to leave it zero because we're not going to change the X, but our Y is going to be an equation. And that is our start scroll global variable plus our start touch global variable minus the touch dot absolute y. So earlier we set up this touch dot absolute y to know where we first touched to start our scrolling. And then we just use the coordinates of our global variables to fill in the rest of this formula. Okay, I'm going to hit done. All right, and right away I noticed that I did something wrong. Up here on our any touch start event, I said set start scroll to touch absolute y. That is wrong. Let's go in and change that to our start touch. I think I just accidentally uh, hit that. So now what we have down here is our start scroll, which is going to read whatever the scroll y is in the system. The scroll y is a built-in value that the Construct 3 game engine reads. And we're going to set that value to the start scroll. And then we're going to add our start touch, which reads wherever we first touched to start scrolling. And then we're going to subtract the touch absolute y value. And that is going to give us our scrolling feature. So if we play. We have our map, and if I click and drag, I can scroll, and whenever I let go, it stays right wherever we left off, and then I can do it again, up and down, and you notice if I go left and right, uh, there's nothing because we're not manipulating the X coordinate. So, uh, pretty cool little feature that is set up for us. One more thing I want to do before we get out of this video, if we go back to our map layout, I'm going to come over here to the layers and I'm going to add another layer. And I'm going to call this one buttons. And I'm going to move it underneath the fade. 
And with our buttons layer selected and unlocked, I'm gonna come over here to our buttons folder and I'm going to drag in our button quit object. So dragging in another instance and it is already the size I want it because we resized it earlier. And if we drop down, we can see our X scale and Y scale are both at 22%. So I am going to just find a good place for this. In fact, I will zoom in and remember, you know, this is the top of our screen. This is the far right of our screen. So I want a little buffer zone here and I have this area. So I'm just going to pick a spot in our text folder and let's drag out an instance of our text quit object. And that looks like that's already set up for us as well. And I'll zoom in and just make sure that uh, it looks centered, something like that. Nothing too fancy. All right, and I'm going to lock that layer and back in our map event sheet. I'm going to make another group and I'm going to call this one uh, button quit. And in that group, I'll add an action, go to our input, select our touch and I'm going to say on tap object and that object is going to be the button quit and the action is going to be we are going to send it to our title menu I'm gonna type in go to layout and I'm going to select the menu title so now when we are on our map if we want to exit out of the map and quit we can hit the quit button and it'll take us back to the title screen. And as we've done with other button selections on other layouts, I want to add a fade to this. So whenever we hit the quit button, I want it to fade out. So I'm going to add an action, functions, and fade out. And I'm going to say 0.5 and that's going to happen before we go to the menu and of course if we don't wait for that 0.5 seconds it'll just take us straight to the menu so let's go ahead and add an action go to system wait and 0.5 and make sure that you're fade out then wait then go to the menu and then one last thing just as we've done with the other button events in other layouts, we're going to run into that problem where if we keep pressing the button, all of this is going to happen every time we press the button. And to avoid that, we can call that same touch active variable that we've used before. So in this blank space here, I'm gonna double click and select system and compare a variable. And that is gonna be touch active. And if it is equal to zero, which is false, then we are able to tap that button and run this code. And then we immediately want to set it to true. So let's add an action system, uh, set value, and set the touch active value to one. And then of course, as we've done before, in our initialize group, we want to make sure that we set this back to zero so next time that we come to the map layout this will be zero and we're able to press the quit button again if we need to so in our initialize group let's add an action set value to uh, of touch active to zero let's play our map and there's our button and I already know that uh, what I did you notice if we scroll uh, our button scrolls with it so let's take care of that let's go to our layout let's select our buttons layer and go over here to our parallax in the properties and type in 0 comma 0 and then let's play it and there we go it stays put and then if we quit it fades out and goes back to our title screen and then in the next couple of videos, we'll set this up to where uh, play will actually send us to the map instead of to level one. So 
We are moving right along in our map portion of the game. In the next video, we will make it to where tapping on an available level will send us to that level. So that is it for this video. I will see you in the next one, and don't forget to save.